resources and economic and trade collaborations. Well, he also hopes the meeting will foster a new impetus for bilateral relations. And the two also agreed to jointly celebrate the 70th anniversary of the victories of World War II next year. The two leaders have also witnessed the signing of a series of agreements with some relating to natural gas cooperation. Meantime, China and South Korea have concluded negotiations on a bilateral free trade agreement in Beijing. Chinese President Xi Jinping and his South Korean counterpart Park Geun-hye confirmed the news in a meeting Monday on the sidelines of the ongoing APEC meetings. President Xi Jinping also met on Monday with Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Razak at the Great Hall of the People. The two leaders congratulated each other on the 40th anniversary of China and Malaysia diplomatic ties. President Xi said the two countries should continue promoting their comprehensive strategic partnership and enhancing mutual trust. He also urged increased cooperation on infrastructure projects, connectivity and finance. On his end, Najib echoed President Xi's remarks on bilateral ties. He also expressed hope that China's proposed Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank can begin work as soon as possible. Chinese President Xi Jinping has also met with leaders from Indonesia, Canada, Thailand and Singapore. In his meeting with Indonesian President Joko Widodo, Xi Jinping said Indonesia and China should look at their relations from a strategic and long-term perspective and strengthen cooperation on the basis of mutual understanding, support and trust. During his talks with Canadian Prime Minister Stephen Harper, Xi Jinping called for both sides to cooperate in law enforcement to clamp down on corruption. And during talks with Thai Prime Minister Prayus Chan Ocha, Xi Jinping voice hopes that the two countries' agreements in energy and education can be implemented in the future. Xi Jinping also said Chinese enterprises are encouraged to invest in Thailand. Xi Jinping also met with Singaporean Prime Minister Lee Sian Loon. The two leaders describe relations between their two countries as strategic and instructive. But this morning's APEC CEO summit, leaders from Peru, New Zealand and Vietnam have given speeches on issues of inequality, finance and connectivity in a global background. Peruvian President Oyala Amala joined a discussion on global inequality. And on the aspect of income equality, the president said the state should be present for the entire territory, not just the main cities. He also stressed the importance of building infrastructure that brings opportunities to the people. Well, in the next session, New Zealand's Prime Minister John Key delivered a speech on global finance about securing its future. And following that, the president of Vietnam participated in a discussion on accelerating connectivity in the Asia-Pacific region. He talked about the biggest barriers for Vietnam's integration into the various international free trade agreements, which are institutional building and regulation, as well as human resources and product competitiveness. Joining us now is our reporter Xu Wenjing, who is live standing by in Beijing's National Convention Center. Hey, Wenjing there. Uh, what are the highlights so far and what can we expect later? Yes, you know that during this morning session, you know, many leaders from the member economies, they joined this morning session. They talk about the global uh, finance, global uh, inequality, and also the topics on how to accelerate the regional connectivity. And um, in less than, the, um, I talk, and I also talked to some of the uh, business representatives. They told me that it is very, it's a good platform uh, for them to talk with the, uh, the politicians because they are the policy makers and they themselves, they are the participant of the market. Market. They think that the CEO summit serve as a great platform for them to carry out uh, dialogues, in-depth discussions. And we know that in less than 30 minutes at 2.30 p.m., uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin will make a speech on, uh, how, on the meaning of the Asia-Pacific Partnership in the perspective of, of Russia's views. And uh, prior to his uh, visit to China, uh, he, he highly uh, complimented, uh, complimented the relations between China and Russia. And upon his arrival, and he and, and also and also his meet with the uh, with his Chinese counterpart um, Chinese President Xi Jinping and uh He's, we can say that he has already made some uh, fruitful uh, results with the signing of more than 10 agreement, including uh, the, uh, the China-Russia natural gas pipeline. And this pipeline is the west route, which will start from the, the Altai uh, in the uh, uh, northwestern uh, part of China's Xinjiang Uyghur.